and I'll change the background. Alrighty, so here we are after break and we're dealing with a new rational function. Notice now that the degree on the bottom is higher than the degree on the top and we'll talk about the effect that has. But right now we have to look at the domain. And that means take what's on the bottom and set it equal to zero. So x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals zero. Um, 12, aha, negative 12 is going to equal negative six times positive two. Here I am, forgot to pull up my uh, uh, camera, webcam. And negative six plus positive two is negative four. So those are the numbers I'll use. So we'll factor x, x minus six plus two, set each factor equal to zero. So x is going to equal positive six, and x is going to equal negative two. These are the numbers I have to take out of my domain. So, if I write this in set builder notation, here it is. And it's much more interesting if I write this in um, interval notation. Let's mark these no, two numbers that cannot be Notice that all the numbers on the left on the x-axis are okay on the left of negative two. All the numbers to the right of negative two and to the left of positive six are okay. And all of the numbers to the right of, of positive six all the way out to positive infinity are okay. So that means we will write three intervals. Negative infinity to negative two. And you end up with negative two to positive six. Unioned up with positive six to infinity. And that's my domain written either way. Oh, X equals. Whoa, messed that up. Thank goodness I got it right there. Um, let's write this a little bigger here. Not bigger, but taking up more room. X equals negative two. Yes, okay. Now, if there's no cancellation on top, there, you know, uh, top and bottom. If there's no cancellation, those are going to be my asymptotes, but I have to make sure. So I'll have X minus two 
over x minus 6 times x plus 2. OK, no cancellation there. So that means that my vertical asymptotes, my vas, we're going to have two of them this time. We're going to have x equals 6. That's the equation of that one. And x equals negative 2. Now notice that's what you got right here. X equals 6 and X equals negative 2. And if you don't have any cancellation, those end up being the equations of the vertical asymptotes. So let us do that right now. That's one vertical asymptote, x equals 6. And another vertical asymptote, x equals negative 2. OK, that's terrific. And there are no points of discontinuity, no holes. Now the horizontal asymptote. We're going to take X over x squared, that is x to the 1 over x to the 2, which is x over x times x. So these guys cancel, and I'll be left with 1 over x. Now mentally do this. With that X, you're going to have a one over a number that's humongously large like five zero 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 zero. And we could keep going on. If you were to put that in your calculator, it would probably freak out and go to, to scientific notation, which nobody wants. But this number is so close to zero, it might as well be y equals zero, because that's what it will round to. In fact, let's get the calculator out and do that. Okay, clear. One divided by five zero 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 zero. Enter. Yes. Okay. I'll I'll write what that is. Two times ten to the negative fourteen. This is 2 times 10 to the negative 14 at 14, negative. And what that means is you take the number 2, 2.0, and you are now going to put 13 zeros in front of it. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ah, thirteen. Here's the new dec decimal point. So you'll have zero. That's not there anymore. Zero, 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 zero. This number quite clearly rounds to zero. So that means your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. Now let me show you where y equals zero is. We'll make this blue. Y equals zero is the x axis. Y equals zero is the X axis. They are the same thing. This is the equation of the X axis. So here's the rule. You can memorize it or not. When the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, the X axis, Y equals zero, is automatically your Ha! Your horizontal asymptote. So here are the three rules. Equal degrees. On top and on the bottom. That is an A. You've got the ratio, the fraction in other words, the ratio of the leading coefficients. And so, for instance, we had in the first problem, 3x over x. They were both x to the 1. They canceled, leaving 3 over 1, which is 3. And then we had the degree of the top. Higher degree over lower degree. There's no no vertical, there's no horizontal asymptote at all. And what did we have? See, here's the first one. Here's the second one. We had x squared over x. x squared over x. That's x times x over x. These guys cancel, leaving you with x over 1, which is just x. Well, write it, x over 1, which is x. 
And so what you're left with is, since this number is going really, really far out to positive infinity and really, really far out the other way to negative infinity, um, what you're going to end up with is a horizontal asymptote that equals infinity and a horizontal asymptote that equals negative infinity. Really, what is that? So, there's no horizontal asymptote. There's an oblique asymptote, but you don't have to know anything about that. Now, what we just experienced was this. The degree of the top is lower than the degree of the bottom, so you're left with a number that's getting so big it's going to infinity on the bottom, and that number's going to round to zero, so your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero, which just happens to be the x-axis. Those are the three rules about horizontal asymptotes. You can memorize them or not. Um, just remember that the x you end up with is going to get become very, very, very large. So, what happens? Probably easier to memorize at this stage. All right, now we go to the x-intercepts. We take the top, whatever it is, x minus 2 and set it equal to 0. And we solve it, we add two to both sides, so we get x equals two. In other words, the point two, zero. Now let's go back and check the vertical asymptotes, the domain, six and negative two got taken out, so positive two is okay. And so we're going to have one x intercept right here. Now the y-intercept, I should have put that first, shouldn't I? Well, x minus two over, okay. This is f of x equals. Okay, now f of zero is what the y-intercept is. So we'll have zero minus two over zero minus four times zero minus 12. And that will give us negative two over negative 12 that's going to be positive one-sixth. So your y-intercept is going to be zero comma one-sixth, and we'll go up here. One-sixth is going to be really close to zero, but that's about as close as I can get. And so now this is the frame and the basic information that is all, excuse me, all set up for our graph. So the best way to graph is to take a look at it first. So parentheses, x minus two divided by parentheses x squared minus 4x minus 12. Close parentheses. That's what you want to have in your calculator. And this time I'm going to push zoom and six because I messed up my window, got it all weird last time.
Okay. Oh yeah, we've only got one X intercept right here. Oh, I can't write on it. Okay, here's the way it looks. And And yeah, all right. Oops, except I missed my Y intercept, but don't tell anybody. But I know. OK. No. I promise you it doesn't wiggle like that. OK, that is better. Now I went through my Y intercept. the asymptotes form a frame that actually ends up making it much easier for you to graph. Okay, these have been basic real fundamental um, rational zeros. And now you're going to meet some holes. Meet holes. Which are points of discontinuity. You'll see how it works. So, okay, first we find our domain. I take the bottom, x squared minus 81, and set it equal to zero. Remember, it's only the denominator, only denominator. So this is the difference of two squares. So I will have x plus 9 times x minus 9 equals 0. So that x plus 9 equals 0. And x minus 9 equals 0. So over here I'll subtract 9 and subtract 9. So I will get x equals negative 9. Over here, I'll add 9 and add 9. So I will get x equals uh, positive 9. 
Now these are the numbers that have to be taken out of the domain. Negative nine and positive nine. Okay, so in set builder notation, that's going to be all x such that x cannot be allowed to equal negative 9 or positive 9. Or in um, interval notation, Let's put this out here too. Okay, um, negative infinity into the left side of negative nine, unioned up with the right side of negative nine, all the way to, to the left side of, from the right side of negative nine to the left side of positive nine. and then from the right side of positive nine to infinity. That's what the domain is going to be. However, I cannot just automatically put asymptotes in without making sure if there's cancellation or not cancellation. And looking at this, you know there's going to be cancellation. So what have we got? X plus nine. And I leave my F of X off. I want it, I need it. F of X equals X plus nine over x plus 9 times x minus 9. The x plus 9's cancel. Now remember, what I got from that factor that canceled is x equals negative 9. This one right here. That is not going to be an asymptote because it just canceled out. I still cannot use x equals negative 9. It's out of my domain because of this step right here before the cancellation but it won't be an asymptote. I will only have one asymptote left right here. One vertical asymptote. This gives me my vertical asymptote. This right here the one that canceled gives me my whole, my point of discontinuity. So I am going to have a whole, a point of discontinuity where X equals negative nine. We'll come back later after the graph and we'll put, um, the y value in there. Uh, right now, this is now the f of x we're going to deal with for the intercepts and for the horizontal asymptote. But now, without further ado, let's go to x equals 9 and make a vertical asymptote because it didn't cancel out. 
is 9. Okay, now we're going to deal with the horizontal asymptote, but now this is what we have left. So we're going to be looking at f of x equals 1 over x minus 9, f of x equals 1 over x minus 9. And f of x, really should have written it up there, shouldn't I? f of x equals 1 over x minus 9. Okay? So, for the horizontal asymptote, you have degree zero, constants are always degree zero, degree zero over, the power on x is one, so degree one, the degree of the top is lower than the degree of the bottom, so that means the x-axis is going to be our, our horizontal asymptote. The equation is y equals zero. So this is our, our asymptote. Oh, I'm supposed to dash it. That's right. Never mind. All right, so we have our ha and we have our va. Okay. Now, while we're at it, Let's find the y-coordinate of x equals negative 9. That's where there will actually be a hole in the graph. I take negative 9 and I put it in for x, so I'll find f of negative 9 equals 1 over negative 9. That's going to be 1 over negative 18 which is negative, ugh, stop it, negative one over 18. That is a number really, really close to the center. Well, no, it's not because of X equals negative nine. Here is going to be where the hole in the graph is located. And you'll see what we do to it.
Okay, now I'm going to graph this. You usually cannot see a hole on your graph. Some people have told me their calculators will show them the hole. I think that's great. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have x plus 9 in parentheses divided by parentheses x squared minus 81. Double check to make sure that's that's true. Yes. Okay. Now, graph. Now, where did I say my Y intercept was? You see what it looks like. Let's go out a little more to the right. I'm going to go out to 20 on the right instead of 10. So there we have that. Okay. So Here we have this. Now, what is what is my y intercept? I never found it. I never found the intercepts. What a jerk. OK, I have one in my numerator. I have one in my numerator and there is no x. So how am I going to set one equal to zero? One will never equal zero. There's no x there that I can solve. So, there is no x-intercept. Now the y-intercept, we put a zero in for every x. It's one over negative nine, which is negative one ninth. So really, 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 really close. On the bottom, but really close. To the origin. OK, now. Here's what we're going to do with that hole. Over here, we actually have a hole. Now, um, it's hard to see, so I want to erase that. Okay. Now look. Hmm. Erase this there. 
OK, right in the graph. We're going to have a hole. Like that. That's where our hole is. It literally is a hole in the graph. It can be easily filled in by making a piecewise defined function. And how I would write that, you don't have to, but I'm just telling you how, how you could. f of x equals x plus 9 over x squared minus 81 for x not equal to negative 9. And um, here, let's get rid of this. You'll see why in a minute. And f of x equals negative 1 over 18. Remember, that's what we found was the y coordinate of the x coordinate where the hole was. For x equals negative 9, f of x equals. Now it's a piecewise defined function, and I could, well, if, if this were what I was dealing with, then uh, that would be filled in. And that's probably what would happen in an industry. On the other hand, this can never be OK, let's do one more really fast. Um, I'll be erasing this when class is over. Um, otherwise, people watching the video who haven't been here won't know what the heck is going on. OK, now this is going to be our last one today, I think. I think. Um, yeah, because we have some word problems to do too. But I think we're going to have one more hole, but I'm not sure. So let's go through this and find out. All right, the domain. All that matters to me when I'm finding the domain is to take the denominator, even though it, something in it might cancel out. x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Boom, 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 boom equals 0. We'll have an x and an x and a 3 and a 2. x equals 3 and 2. 3 times 2. 6 equals 3 times 2. And 3 plus 2 equals 5, so plus 3, plus 3, uh, plus 2, Blech. I'm getting tired now, plus 2. And I set each factor equal to 0, x plus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. And that will give us, if we subtract 3 from both sides, x equals negative 3. And if we subtract 2 from both sides, x equals negative 2. 
So negative two and negative three are going to be taken out of the domain. Okay, now. We're going to find the vertical asymptotes now. So this is where I have to find out if we're going to have any cancellation. So, um, negative three factors into positive three times negative one and three plus negative one is positive two. So that's what I want, plus three minus one. And then we've already factored this. Okay. So we are going to have cancellation here. This is going to give us our point of discontinuity. All right, so we're gonna be getting rid of that, so I don't need the parenthesis. Ready to find this, x plus three equals zero, so x equals negative three. That's where our hole is going to be. And now f of x equals x minus one over x plus two. And we have not gotten rid of x plus two. So the vertical asymptote, remember we got x equals negative two from this factor right here. So this is going to be our vertical asymptote. The VA is X equals negative two. This is going to be our vertical asymptote. This is where we're going to have our hole. So, there's our VA. And it's going to be x equals, the equation of it is x equals negative two. Now for all the rest of this, we are going to use the new, the new identity of f of x. We're going to use f of x equals x minus one over x plus two. F of x equals x minus one over x plus two. And f of x
equals x minus 1 over x plus 2. Okay. Now for the horizontal asymptote, notice that the degree of the top is 1, the degree of the bottom is 1, they have equal degrees. So we take x to the 1 over x to the 1, not forgetting that their coefficients are 1. The x's cancel because they're identical. We're left with 1 over 1, which is 1. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 1. So let's go find it. Here's y equals 1 right here. Y equals 1 will be a horizontal line going through y equals 1. Okay, and now the x-intercepts. For the x-intercept, I only use the numerator. x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, and you get x equals 1. So that's going to be your x-intercept, 1, 0. Go up here real fast and just make sure there's no problem with that. No, the two numbers that had to be taken out of the domain are negative three and negative two. One is just fine. So I will go to one zero. Now the y-intercept is what you get when you put a zero in for every x. So f of zero equals zero minus one over zero plus two. That's going to be negative one half. So the y-intercept is going to be zero comma negative one half. which will be here. And now we finally have a, a y-intercept we can actually draw somewhat correctly. Okay, now let's take a look at what this baby looks like. Okay, uh, we are going to have parentheses. Now, it doesn't matter which one I graph, considering that the calculator is smart enough to do its own, its own cancellation. Um, I could graph x minus 1 over x plus 2, maybe I will, and graph this also, and they will be exactly the same graph. So let's prove it. x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by parentheses x squared plus 5x plus 6.
Okay, x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. Graph. Okay. Well, fine. Now, we're going to go to red, and we're going to graph what we had after we canceled. Parentheses. X minus one. Parentheses closed. Divided by parentheses x plus 2. Parentheses closed. Now I'm going to graph that, and all you should see should be the red graph. See, they're exactly the same graph. They would have to be. Okay, so I have to find my hole. The point of discontinuity. For that, I use f of x. I mean, I have the x coordinate, but I don't have the y coordinate. So f of x equals x minus 1 over x plus 2. And what the point of discontinuity is going to be, it's going to be what, what I get when I put negative 3 into here. All right, we're going to have negative 4 over negative 3 plus 2, that'll be negative 1. So we're going to have positive 4. So our, our hole is going to occur there. there negative three four so i'm going to put a hole there right now negative three four and so And take another look at this. It really helps. Okay. Starts from down here, really, really close to the vertical asymptote. Then it starts to curve, 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 and gets up, up, up. Uh. Dog it. There. Save that before it gets worse. And again, just like before, if we wanted to, we could turn this into um, a piecewise defined function where we def redefine this so that that point is filled in and then we could go about our business just worrying about X equals negative two.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for hardcore analysis. Uh, when you get back from your 10 minute break, so be back at 1020, we're going to do um, um, several word problems that deal with this. What does the, the horizontal asymptote really, really mean? Okay, so go take a 10 minute break, walk around, I will do the same thing. See you later. 10 minutes later. <laughs>